Through their farming and their germs, Europeans had established a firm foothold in the southern tip of Africa. Now they looked to expand. In the 1830s, there was a burst of the pioneer spirit such as had been seen in the European expansion across North America and Australia. This time it was Dutch settlers and these pioneers moved into the interior like the pioneers moving across North America and Australia. Over the course of the 1830s, thousands of Dutch farmers with their families and possessions loaded into wagons left the Cape in search of new land to settle. They called themselves the Voortrekkers, and these pioneers all wielded another agent of European conquest, the gun. This is a muzzle-loading rifle, typical of a weapon that every Voortrekker would have had in his wagon. The Boers were particularly adept at using this weapon. They could reload it and fire from horseback. These muzzle-loading rifles are still much admired by the Voortrekker's descendants. Every single man that was uh, in, in good health had, yeah. had at least two or three yeah. of these particular rifles. In those days, it must have been the person's life, you know. Everything depended on that, you know. They hunted with him. Yes, he hunted they protected with him. themselves with him. It was part of him, you know. If, if you didn't handle a gun that day, there was something wrong with you. Yeah. Yes. Guns and the steel from which they're made were the last two of the great advantages that Europeans carried with them around the globe. <laughs> Guns are the result of thousands of years of complex technological developments which began outside Europe, but which Europeans perfected. And that was all because of the head start that their farming had given them thousands of years previously. You know, the flintlock rifle, it was, you know, I shouldn't really say this, but it was nearly like as important as a cell phone is today. Yeah. You can't go without your cell phone in those days. You couldn't go without your flintlock rifle. Fire. Armed as they were, the European settlers must have been confident they could overcome any obstacle as they pushed further into the African interior. By February 17th, 1838, the Voortrekkers had reached 800 miles inland from the Cape. But they were entering an alien and unexplored land Out of the darkness swept a native African army. Their victims barely had time to fire a single shot from their rifles before they were completely overwhelmed. Within hours, nearly 300 Voortrekkers lay dead. Their enemy had struck without mercy. <laughs> K. 
killing men, women, and children alike. Who could have committed such a ruthless and calculated assault, stopping the Europeans in their tracks? In fact, the Vortrekkers had trespassed across the border of a mighty African kingdom, inhabited by people very different from the Khoisan of the Cape. They had encountered the Zulus. When they ran into the Zulus, they ran into a group of people who were very different to anybody else they'd been up to, up against up until that point in time. This was an organized group of people. The Zulus were the authors of a unique and highly developed African state. Their military skills had allowed them to overwhelm their native African neighbors. They held more than 30,000 square miles of land and had established a sophisticated economy and society. The ferocity of the Zulu defense of their land was something the Vortrekkers had simply not expected. It was more than the Boers could handle. They, they, they were not prepared for the attack from the Zulus. They were up against a king who could mobilize an army of 10 to 15,000 men without any problem at all, that could take on almost anybody. They were absolutely fearless. The Vortrekkers were stunned and devastated. Had they and the power of guns, germs, and steel met their match in Africa? The Vortrekkers showed little interest in who the Zulus were or how they developed such a sophisticated state. They wanted a showdown. They gathered their scattered forces behind a great circle of wagons and readied themselves for battle. At dawn on the 16th of December, 1838, more than 10,000 Zulus stormed across the horizon, charging in to destroy the outnumbered settlers. But this time, the Europeans were able to use their technology to maximum effect. To increase the rate of fire from their muzzle-loading rifles, some would shoot while others would reload. So it was shoot, hand the gun over, take the next gun, fire, hand the gun over. So every five or six seconds you could fire a shot. See, that, that, that was the important thing. This time, not a single Zulu could get within 10 paces of the encampment. It was a massacre. The four checkers had probably killed an estimated three to three and a half thousand Zulus. The Boers themselves suffered only three injuries. The conflict became known as the Battle of Blood River. The Zulus had been broken. Guns, germs, and steel had prevailed. 